Hello everyone and welcome to another Coding Fundamentals in GML tutorial. My name is Sam Spade and in this tutorial we'll be talking about event order. Event order matters a great deal in GameMaker Studio 2 because all code is run sequentially. There are some exceptions to this, but very few. Virtually all code runs in order. And virtually all code in GameMaker Studio 2 runs inside of events. Again, there are some exceptions to this, but virtually all code in GameMaker Studio 2 runs inside events. Therefore, the order of events will determine the order that your code runs in. So let's talk about the basics of event orders. First, as we said before, events run in a certain order, and very importantly, you cannot control the order that those events run in. GameMaker Studio 2 automates a lot of this for us behind the scenes, and that's great, but with that automation, you lose a little bit of control. So that's the first thing to understand. Events run in a certain order, and you cannot control that order. The next thing to understand is that all instances run an event before moving on to the next event. So all instances run the begin step event, then all instances run the step event, then all instances run the end step event. And the next important thing to note is that you cannot control the order that instances run in. So these ideas are very important to understand. Events run in a certain order, you can't control that order. And all instances run an event before moving on to the next event, and you can't control the order that instances run inside of an event. So what do we know then about event order? Well, we only know what the GameMaker Studio 2 manual tells us, and it says that there are only three reliable areas. There are only three areas that we can rely on the order of events always happening in a specific way. And those are upon entering a room, the step event, and the draw event. And you should never, never rely on any other perceived order. And I say this because if you do some tests, you can figure out the order that events are running on your machine. But that order could be different on someone else's computer or on a different platform or in a future update. And so if you code your game to rely on that specific order or that perceived order, the order that you've discovered testing on your computer, you might in fact have a broken game if you try to port it somewhere else or run it on someone else's computer. So again, never rely on any perceived order except the order prescribed in the manual. So the first category is upon entering a room. The first thing that happens are all instance variables get declared, then the create event for each instance runs, and immediately after each instance create event, it's instance create code or instance creation code that you can define in the room editor runs. And this is one of the rare breaks where it will be the same object running two events back to back rather than all instances running the create event and then all instances running their instance creation code. Then the game start event will run if the game is just starting, then the room creation code will run, and then the room start event will run. I highlighted these two up here because as I understand it, when you create an instance of an object through code, these two things will happen in this order, not this part right here, but the instance variables will be declared and then the create event of that instance will run. The next thing the manual tells us that we can rely on is the order of the step event. First, you have the begin step event, then the step event, and then the end step event. And again, it's very important to remember that all instances will run their begin step event, then all instances will run their step event, then all instances will run their end step event. That means if you put code in a step event and then in an end step event, you can be guaranteed that the step event, regardless of what instance it's in, will run before any other instances in step event. Then we have the draw order, which again, the GameMaker Studio 2 manual says is set in stone. I've actually copied this over from the manual. First, we have the pre-draw event up here. Then, and this is very important, for each view, we have the draw begin event, the draw event, and the draw end event. Many games will only use one view, so this will just happen once. But if you were to have multiple views, this would loop for each view. So if you had three views, you would get the pre-draw event, then you would get the draw begin, draw, draw end, draw begin, draw, draw end, draw begin, draw, draw end, then post-draw event. Then you would have the draw GUI begin event, the draw GUI event, and the draw GUI end event. This chart also contains some additional information, such as you know the application surface being cleared, the application surface being reset, the application surface drawing, and so on, which can be very helpful to know when those things occur. As I've mentioned before, you have no control over what order instances run within an event. And just like with event order, you should never rely on any perceived order. Again, you can do some tests and you can figure out how instances are running. 
because Game Maker Studio 2 will use an order. I think in Windows, they generally run them from the smallest instance ID number to the largest instance ID number. But again, you should never rely on that. It might be different on different platforms, different computers, different game updates. If you need control, you must manually run the code in the order you want. It. So there are many different ways of doing this. But for example, you could add all your instances to a priority queue, for example, uh, based upon their Y value, and then go through that priority queue with the with statement to draw all of them in order of how great or how small their Y value is. That's just one example. There are many other ways you could do it. The point is simply that if you absolutely need control of instance order, how the instances are running their events, you have to take that control and do it manually. So in summary, understanding the event order is critical, but so is accepting the limitations that exist in Game Maker Studio 2. You should only rely on the order given in the manual, and you should never rely on any perceived order or any order that you discover through testing. When you do need more control, which honestly is pretty rare, you generally do not need more control than what they provide, but when you do need more control than what is provided, you can take over manual control by putting instance IDs into your own type of data structure and then running through that data structure with a with statement or something similar to order the code manually. As always, the links in this slide will be below. I want to draw special attention to this last link. This link is to Friendly Cosmonauts free depth system on the Game Maker Studio 2 marketplace. And she uses, uh, I believe, a grid system. It might be a priority queue uh, to order the drawing of instances inside of a draw event. And so if you want an example of how you can manually control the instances or the order instances run their events, that's a great place to look that's free. You can just download it and look through her code. The source code will also be available below, as will the links to this slide. And that's it. Thanks for watching.